All right, today we're going to retouch a mid-journey image. I'm gonna go over some of the issues that show up in renders coming out of this AI generator and how to fix them in Photoshop. Here we are in Photoshop. Um, our first step, uh, here's, here's our image and uh, you know, another Vermont travel tourism winter, winter tourism poster from uh, the state of, the beautiful state of Vermont. Um, so first, as with other, uh, retouching things, ha my work process is this, uh, I'm going to duplicate my background layer, uh, and keep the original copy. That way I can always go back and see what's going on. I'm going to create a blank layer. I'm going to call this, uh, if you double click on it, I'm going to call it notes. And this is my grease pencil stage. So I'm gonna grab my pen um, and let's give it a nice, uh, hey, we can make it pretty hard. We're gonna make it a, a smaller, let's see, how are we? Uh, all right, that's pretty good. And let's give it a nice vibrant color, uh, red. And this is where I go through and make notes on all the changes I'm going to do. Um, I called it's the grease pencil stage. It's, you know, if I was retouching a photograph, this is, uh, what I would be doing. This is when I would be doing if it, if it was film digital, doesn't matter. Um, this is the first stage. I got to get the broad strokes. I gotta, I gotta know what my plan is. So I'm going to go through here and, uh, sorry, I'm on the Cintiq. So I'm kind of going to be off camera in a way. Um, Let's select this big white area in here needs to come out. Uh, this text needs to be replaced. This white thing right here, that's going to get taken out. Um, so issues in mid journey when we're rendering is, uh, sometimes it puts elements into your image that are, um, so, okay. So when um you're taking a picture of something at great distance a a a landscape like this uh there's there's this uh phenomenon called um atmospheric per, uh perspective atmospheric perspective is the further you get away from the camera or your eyes there's more particulars in the air and everything and that makes um the color i believe it gets uh it gets gray it it turns gray, uh, less contrast, and blue. So it gets bluer, grayer as it goes further away. Um, where um, the journey messes up sometimes, and a lot of these AI generators mess up, is it will put elements in the deeper stages uh, of, of your uh, composition at a higher contrast. So it'll put like dark elements out there, um, kind of peppered through there, that um are too dark so it throws off the atmospheric perspective it throws off the depth of the image so these are some things i am so you can see in here these things i'm circling they're too dark for our image so i'm gonna get rid of those um this line in here i do not like uh i want to reduce and simplify that's my goal uh, that's a little dark in there we that's dark uh reduce and simplify that's that's the key to great imagery uh we're gonna get rid of these lines um right in here the contrast is all messed up uh, and it's i don't know if it's supposed to be architecture or something it's it it, it it's artifacting um in our image and we don't want that um uh, right here so we have this shadow here that um and i'm just selecting that one right now that is not motivated by anything it's too narrow um to be the trees it it, it doesn't it doesn't give a feel or a shape to the the ground there so that's going to get nuked and um these okay uh so these ski tra uh, trails are gonna get redrawn 
so that they're correct. Um, you know, I prefer snowboarding, but I am not prejudiced against any way you get down a mountain. As long as you're out there enjoying the alpine lifestyle, I love it. So, um, the cool thing about ski tracks is, and, and not snow, as you can see, I got all my snowboards back here. Um, the ski tracks are visually more, um, readable. Uh, when you see it, you know what it is, where a snowboard track is a big wide track and it, it doesn't read in graphic design the way a ski trail does. Um, so, uh, so we're going to keep going with the, with the ski trail. Um, this area to the left, oops, over here to the left. This is all going to get taken out. And I think we can develop some really nice uh, negative space in there. And, you know, I know I said I was taking this line out and now I'm taking out the whole thing. The reason for it is is just to have uh, a little bit of conversation about negative space. And that's going to create some really nice negative space at the bottom of the... Uh, of the design so this whole area needs to come out too and then of course along the bottom here we have this white line that needs to be corrected and taken out and i think that's all of our uh, uh our, our um retouching and then we'll um we'll put some text in there and we'll do uh, a couple of um of uh filters to the text to to get it to look really nice and uh all right let's get in here let's get this done um so these are my notes uh i'm gonna hide them but i always refer to them so we keep that on top and it's like uh now as i'm going through i you know you can get lost and be like what was i doing what's next i can just turn this on and be like oh okay that's where i am that's what i need to get done so let's uh let's start hacking away at this i'm gonna go to my background copy that i made uh well let's uh we can rename this we can be efficient and uh, say this is our working working layer as opposed to our old background layer uh first thing we're gonna do is select all of this up here and shift backspace we get a content aware fill let's see how that um See what kind oh, look at that perfect that get i mean geez that used you used to have to go through and clone that out we're doing it again over here uh ship backspace Captain aware fill used to have to clone it out and then rework all the texture in and all that now uh you know another stage of ai um you know being being content aware we're going to uh apple d to deselect or window D, I think on Windows. Uh, let's zoom in here and get a little bit of a look at what we are doing here. This is probably, uh, it's a little close to the, the elements we're keeping. So let's just, let's see if it does what. Okay, I'll, I'll take that. Um, we're gonna just slowly ship delete um when when things get too close to other elements uh what happens oops is you start to get these uh these these really soft edges uh where it's trying to sample from both sides um let's uh let's fix yeah that's it's okay Uh, an another thing we can do here, another way to attack this is we can go to our patch tool and just select and, and clone two. Here's another guy. We'll get rid of him. There's some weird texture in there. Get rid of it. Or, or just, uh, uh, minimize it. Let's uh, see what we're doing here. See, we we start to get this halo effect in there. 
this is the patch healing tool. Um, probably going to need to get in here with a... Uh, why don't we just get in there with our clone? We're going to deselect. Select up here. Get our right brush size. What are we at? Uh, we're at 30%. We want to be a zero full percent because we are doing really broad adjustments right now. Um, and really get in here and get rid of uh, these grotesque mistakes render artifacts let's call them that let's let's get them to be render artifacts we've got some bright stuff down there you know this stuff doesn't read really well so we're gonna kind of again this is real broad stroke um stuff moving kind of fast through it but you know that's how it is get rid of all this this I'm I'm actually going to touch this stuff up a little bit afterward so uh, moving quickly does not hurt us at all here we go here are these elements that are just too contrasty for um, uh, for where they are in, in our our depth of field in this design so, oops. As I said before, we're just broad stroking. This guy's a little. So, I'll... here's another way we can fix this. We can um, we can grab our brush tool and sample this uh, this beigeish color. Um, let's set our brush at about. I'm gonna hit the two key, so it's at a twenty percent opacity, and I'm just gonna tap on this stuff. And that's going to bring the contrast down. And it's going to kind of make it sit a little bit better in our uh, our our composition. And it's not going to jump out so much. Let's get rid of these weird stuff. Um, we can also move on to a different tool if we want to mix things up. Spot healing. You know, that works well on, on a lot of this stuff. Again, we're because it'll sample some texture. Um, and look at that. Um, okay, let's uh, let's get this in here. It's just too dark, and it's not adding. To be to be honest, oh boy, that is a. Let's go back to our patch tool. We could be using, um, as I say, we could be cloning this. You know. That's the old way to do it. When I say old, that's like two months ago. You probably would have done it that way, but now everything is so... It's changing so quickly, and we have all of these tools at our disposal that are using AI, and... And, uh... You know, AI models online that, you know, we can, we can just move so quickly through this process uh okay now i'm gonna get to my clone and why are you oh i probably have something selected boom yeah that's what it was you know i don't even have to clone what i could be doing here is using my patch or what is it uh uh, healing brush where we actually sample and then yeah you see it's trying to uh, blend it with what's underneath it so let's go back to our clone and just get rid of this stuff real easy you know when you're dealing with these organic shapes too and in, in landscape um there's so much flexibility in your retouching because nobody knows what it's what it's supposed to look like. I guess is is what we want to say. Um, I see that there's a couple repeating pattern patterns in here. We're gonna take care of that. Oops, I got a little crazy there. 
Bingo. Bango. Oop. Just keep re resampling so that you can have um so you can get rid of like this repetitiveness. Okay. Uh, there is some repetitiveness in here. There's other things we can do too. I'm going to show you how to, you know, some pro level uh, cloning techniques in a little bit. Uh, you know, okay, you see these, Sam, like I got some repetitive stuff. Um, if you go to your window and clone source, that's, that's this little window right here. Um, you can do things, um, like we can, we can flip our clone source, uh, 90 degrees. Um, and you see what that does. And let's, let's also put our opacity down to like 40. So, and what that does is it, instead of cloning things directly, um, from a uh, copying basically copying and pasting um pixels from a different part of your image this is actually copying and pasting a mirrored version of it and it's another great way to break up uh repeating textures when you get into cloning um and so right now um i'm cloning uh with it flipped horizontally i can also flip it vertically and that way I am not repeating my textures or it's not as I'm, I am repeating them, but I'm repeat repeating them flipped. So it looks, um, so the eye doesn't just immediately jump to it. All right. So now we have this big sloth of a area, the contrast messed up. It's not organic there's too many hard edges in it so we're gonna really do a broad stroke change here we're gonna select all of this this whole area in here i don't know what mid journey was doing but as again we'll we'll call it artifacting holding down the alt key right now so i could you know there's things that i don't need to get rid of and then the shift key I can add to my selection. Make sure I'm getting everything I want. All right, so let's give uh, this element a uh, shift backspace uh, content aware fill and see if, if it gives, look at that, perfect. I love it, filled it in beautifully. Oh, the power of AI. Let's get our clone brush again. There are a couple artifacts in here. We'll put it at 100%. Um, and I'm gonna flip it back because I don't, the repeating pattern isn't going to be very noticeable in here. Um, the other thing is as long as you keep sourcing from different areas, you should be good. Uh, there's this weird hard, again, wrong contrast for the area it draws your eye in um there's things with uh oh, photographs and images um it the the first part your eye immediately goes to the brightest part of a photograph first uh, this has been studied for a long time um it'll go to the brightest part and then it will notice uh, contrast and uh, it'll jump to contrast areas. And it'll also know, your eyes will also notice like where atmospheric perspective is off and um, I need a little coffee here. Hmm. And uh, regular perspective, that can be off. Your eyes will catch all that. You'd be amazed at how much um, your eyes can can catch you know i don't like this element in here i i know it it could make sense but uh 
reduce and simplify. That's that's my goal. So I'm gonna just kind of slack all of this. Boom. Oh shoot. And can we do the shift? A little content aware. Oh, takes care of it. Love it. Um. Okay. So. Okay. Um, I'm looking at this. Uh, I see a little bit of haloing. So that's where it's a little bit it's bright on the opposite side of a dark edge. And then it goes to our natural color. I want to fix that. So let's get rid of the haloing. We're going to grab our tragic wand and select as much as this green area as possible. You know, keep it a, a real good uh, natural or, or organic edge to it. Um, we've select this island in here. And now we're going to grab our selection and we're going to inverse it. All right, now I'm going to grab my clone tool and I'm going to go a little bit deeper out where the um, halo doesn't exist and just clone it back in right up to the edge. And that should just take care of our our issues with haloing. You know, um, photographers, uh, we got good at fixing haloing back in the early 2000s. Oops. Uh, when everyone was starting to do uh, HDRI, HD images. And, uh, you know, when you start processing them, one of the early issues was uh, was halos around edges. And you could tell, you know, especially like somebody would push a sky, the exposure of a sky too far down. And um, that's that. And it would... Um, it would create this... Uh, this this halo around the edges where it was high contrast. Um, it still happens when people are processing your raw, raw photos. You'll you'll see it. Um, all right. Uh, I want to grab. Okay, I see a little bit of an issue right here. There's a soft edge there. I don't like so. Let's. There's nice organic area I can sample from. Bam. All right, we got rid of that soft edge. Uh, let's... Let's grab our tragic wand again. And... Grab as much... Shift select, shift select, grab as much of this green area as possible. Very good. Okay, so we got it selected. We're gonna go select inverse and, and grab our clone tool. And we're gonna go out into this yellow area and just start cloning this edge because we've got uh, the uh, the haloing again that seems common with uh, I, I see that a lot in, in mid journey and AI renders um, you know I don't have to take everything out but um, I am going to add some noise and some texture back into this now, uh, let's do a select inverse. Um, I'm going to select uh, this color, this this yellowy color out here. Uh, I'm going to do a 10%, and I'm just ever so slightly taking... Oh, wait a minute. I noticed something. I got to give myself a hard, uh, soft brush. That's really hard from before. So 
I'm just ever so slightly 10% taking down some of the contrast on this edge. It seemed a little bit dark to me. And uh, that just softens the transition a little bit. Uh, things are looking good. Uh, get rid of some of this. There's a little muddy in there. Let's uh, grab this area. This content aware fill. Ooh, no, that just created an island. So we'll do our other great tool is our patch tool, and we'll just move this to another area and let it kind of soften everything up. Apple, Apple D to deselect. Now we still got some texture and stuff in here. Um, but I think we're looking pretty good. You know, it's, I like the texture in there, but it's gotta be, it's gotta fit. You know what I'm saying? Um, you can't have a standout area of texture. And that's what we're getting rid of, is it's anything that's just gonna capture our eye and draw it to places we don't want. And doesn't have to be completely smoothed out, but everything is looking really good now. Uh, let's zoom out and see how Apple delete, or Apple D, so we don't, um, have anything selected that's looking really good all right so let's get down to our foreground here boom 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 i'm gonna grab the pen tool and i want to continue the curvature of this edge here uh because i am imagining that that is um, the edge of a, a hill. It's, it's a ridge line. So let's draw a curve where we want that ridge to be um, and then I'm going out here and out here I'm taking care of uh, this shadow first this this long one just because I need to create this ridge line um, because the shadow actually connects with the trees and so we need to do a little bit of well excuse me a little bit of uh, work to to rebuild uh, we'll grab in here. Oop. Ha. I have, oh, Jesus. What did I do here? Go back to my pen tool. Um, right click over your path. Turn it into make selection. I'm going to do a point five pixel for the feather radius. And now that's converted that path into a selection area. Uh, so now I'm, I'm masked off. Sorry about that, I jumped right ahead. So now I'm gonna clone here and boom. Now I can create a nice edge to the, um, to the tree, uh, to the, to the surface here. And that's gonna give us a very nice, uh, geographic curve um now we can get a little heavy handed and get rid of this other stuff oh that is some that is that is not blending great there's a big difference in the color down here to up here good to note my eye didn't really catch that so um but now it's it's disconnected. Uh, so what do I want to do? What do I want to do? 
I think what I want to do is let's see if I can just curve off air. Actually, I'm, I'm going to grab my brush and select this color right in here. And I'm going to kind of put it at a hundred percent and let's get our brush. I think this needs to be at about a 70% because there is a little bit of a softness to that. And we are going to just shape out our ski path here. Excellent. There are our ski trails. I want this a little rough because I want to match the the um not texture but well i guess it's texture it's edge texture I want the edges to look the same uh not that i just connected so now i've i've gone ahead and now um i need to blend this i've gone ahead and separated this big shadow from elements that I want to keep. So, uh, okay, let's go. This is, this may be a good tool for our healing brush where we sample. We're going to sample up here and paint it over here and look at how that blends it. going to do the same over here. I need this to blend a little better than it's doing. I can see where I cloned. All right, so now we have this element that's that's separate. I am going to go to my lasso, lasso tool, lasso, and I am going to select all of this. Boom. Shift delete, content aware fill. And please do me right. Not quite, but better than where we were. It's not exactly what I want. Not exactly. Okay. So, uh, but, but we're doing better. So, uh, let's, I still got my lasso tool going. Uh, let's make a selection of this guy. We're going to break this up into a couple of different elements. And we're going to do some uh, patch patch tool work. Bingo. Uh, all of this needs to come out. Okay. Patch tool just erases it and erases it like it's magic. Shift delete. Now it did me right. All right. Very good. Okay. Uh, hmm. That's a little weird in there. Let's go to our clone brush. Oh no. Let's, uh, yeah. Let's go clone brush. I must have tapped something. What is that? Oh, I have a selection gone. Hate when I do that. Okay. Um, let's see. I am going to go. And select this whole bottom area. I know this is. shift to add to it. This is kind of a weird way to do it, but 
I, I really am just experimenting here. I want to see that these ski trails are extended to the end. So, uh, but I want to see if the content aware can, can solve that for me. And bingo, it did it. It knows what it's doing. All right. So we're going to deselect. Now I have a magic wand. Uh, I'm selecting inside of these ski trails. And because um, they're actually pure black in there. And that is not what I want. Um, so let's... Uh, start cloning from above higher that's not okay that did not do what I wanted uh, let's select up here maybe go like an 80% let's go about 30% texture from up there because we have this neat blue in there but we're not um, we're going to darken that up a little bit but Just kind of grabbing texture from the other part. I just didn't like that it was so black. Now let's, um, I have all this selected, so I'm going to Apple C, copy, Apple V, I just pasted it. Um, I pasted it over itself. Now I'm going to turn that to a... Why is there such a hard edge there? I'm gonna multiply it. Oh, must have been some kind of rendering error. So I'm multiplying it, but I'm multiplying it over itself, but I'm gonna darken it down just a, a hair. Let's uh, it right click on, not on the icon, but on the layer. And wait a minute, no, sorry. Right click on the icon. Now we made a selection of the pixels. I want a brush that is a, a dark color. And we're going to make it a bit bigger. Uh, hardness is going to be super soft. Um, this is a very dark color. Uh, we can actually do this non-destructively and put it on a layer above it. And we can multiply. Maybe at a level of... Because I, I kind of want it to be a gradient coming in. Uh, so I'm, I'm painting in over it. Multiplied at an opacity of 20 and I think that looks good deselect and I think our retouching is done okay I see one thing right in here looks a little funky it's there's almost like a hard edge in the texture let's let's do something oh that's where I selected and and did that uh Oh, what do you call it? Uh, content aware thing. So let's let's go through and grab that line again, and you can see that. And uh, shift backspace, see if content aware will soften that out. And, oh, that's because I'm on the wrong layer. Content aware. Yeah, that's working. Do it again. Softens it even more. We want to try a patch over it. Patch worked great. 
And now there's a nicer transition in there and, and not a abrupt line. All right, app of zero. That looks good. That looks really, really good. Um, alt click your background um, visibility and it'll turn everything else off and make that layer visible. So this is where we, this is where we began and this is how we've cleaned it up. Looks good. Reduce, simplify. It's got the essence of Vermont. I love it. All right. Now going up to the top. Oh, let's uh, look at our notes. We've covered everything. Very good. All right. Now what we want is a text. Uh, I'll put this on top. Is this yes? Um, I am using a in a sans serif. So oh, Vermont. There we go. That's what we want it to look like. Um, now, from a design aspect, I don't want it black. I am going to say that's where it, where it belongs. I'm going to select this foreground yellow color. Boom, doesn't that look good? All right, let's, uh, let's do a little work on that right out of the gate. It's a great layout. So first, what I want to do is let's uh, select the pixels. So we're okay. Uh, blank layer. I selected the pixels. Now I'm going to. Uh, I'm gonna go give me my eyedropper. This is my foreground. My pixels are still selected. And I'm gonna do a fill. Instead of content aware, I'm gonna go foreground color because that's what was down here. And now I kind of have a, I, I could have just rasterized that, but I think I also want the, uh, the selection as I move into what I'm doing here. Um, I want to throw a filter on here. I want it to sit a little bit better. Um, and I'm going to do an oil paint. Look at that. Gives nice kind of bumpy texture in there. All right. Um, and you're probably like, God, Rob, what are you doing? What are you, what are you putting that, that texture? That looks God awful. All right. So we've got that. Now I'm going to take, I'm going to take that. It's, it's a little too harsh. So I'm going to throw a bit of a blur on it. And that's going to take that painted style down. Just add. Um, the roughness that I want in there and um, now I've, I've kind of softened up the edges as you can see so I can turn on my bottom Vermont to harden that back up and make that rasterized layer maybe we'll darken it so it the pixels that are darker are showing through. That works. You know, we're still getting that texture in there. Um, I think I want to take these two font layers and put them in their own group, drop it down to this or into, into its own folder group, whatever. 
Um, now, what if I, let's uh, do a filter noise. And just do it like a real fun. Fine. I don't think it even needs that. Uh, okay. Select the whole group. I don't know. Let's uh, let's duplicate the group. Working non-destructively here. We're gonna hide the original. Turn this group into. Uh, we can make it into a smart object. Turn off the selection, and now I'm gonna go to the filter and distort with ripple. This doesn't. Okay, that's a bit much. We're gonna do that. Right idea, wrong execution. This is an old plugin, so it doesn't have a uh, an auto update to it. So we're gonna go back to our ripple. We know that the small, medium, large is the frequency of the ripple while the amount is how far it throws it. So I think medium worked okay, but 156 was too much. So uh, let's go down. I mean, I'm guessing because there's no update 40%. And that's, I'll go a little bit more. Uh, I'm back to distort ripple, just a, a hair more, 66. Okay, that's gonna be it. Well, and it just looks like, um, you know, kind of a, printing bleed in a way you know the thing if I really wanted to you can go back and do it do it again distort ripple this time we'll go as a large maybe turn it down to 49% um, and lay that on top of it nope Right idea, wrong execution. Rip all. Uh, let's go to a small. We'll go 25%. I'm overlaying it to see if I can break up any repetitive patterning. And filter, distort, where are you, ripple? We'll go to a large and bring it down to negative 16. Let's see how that does. All right. Yeah, that looks good. It's got some, some weird bleed on it. Spelt it right, right? God, wouldn't that be awful? All right, this is looking like a great poster. I noticed something down here. I don't like the, w the way that the trees go underneath this branch. Again, it could happen that way, but that is not 
what I whoop. I want to see. So let's go back to our retouching, our working layer. Grab our pen tool so we can be precise here. Okay, do, 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 bingo. Uh, close our pen tool, make a selection. There we go. And let's uh, get our brush. Just sample what's in here. Or zero. Let's see if this more if that edge could be touched up just a hair. We'll grab our clone. That is not my clone. We'll grab our clone. I uh, need something going in the right angle. And just kind of give it a nice organic. Feel to it. All right, that kind of. Up a little. There, we're done. All righty. That looks awesome. What do you think, guys? All right, tell me in the comments what what your uh, what your feeling is. I think it looks great. Um, you know, if I really wanted to do one more, nope, I don't want to do anything. I, I like it. You know, I can noodle this thing forever. Awesome. Let's call it done. All right, guys. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed it. If you could do me a favor and like the video, comment below. And really important, if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be incredible for me. Um, I want to keep making these videos, and that's the only way I can do it. So thank you very much. I enjoy doing this. I hope I shared some great tips, tools, and philosophies with you on how I go about retouching, um, retouching in general, but specifically on this one, retouching mid-journey or AI-generated images. All right, till next time. See ya.